We're seeing so much generative art today. That's text, that's images, even video created by AI. It's getting to the point where I can't get the image of the creation of Adam by Michelangelo out of my mind. That's God reaching down to touch Adam and stir him into life. In this Tech First, we're going to chat about generative AI, what it can do, what it means, how it will change the world, and maybe how it might change us. Our guest is Alex Cardinal. He's the CEO of Glimpse.ai. They have two major AI projects. One is Article Forge that generates articles based on a topic uh, keyword and Word AI, which will rewrite content uniquely in the same style. Welcome, Alex. Thank you for having me today. Let's start pretty high level, pretty broad. I mean, probably even a couple of years ago, I was hearing people talk about it's the golden age of AI, right? As machine learning and other things started really coming into their own. What are we building here with all this generative AI? Yeah, definitely. Well, and it's been over the last couple of years, uh, monumental in terms of the impact that's been made. Um, just like, you know, like a couple of years ago, when you were thinking like AI that could create content, you were imagining like this kind of machine written gibberish. It looked like, you know, like even your four year old kid could probably write something better. And in what was basically like six months, it went from like kind of a uh, this novelty that you kind of laugh at to something that's actually generating really high quality content that uh, like humans can use that can even in many cases show same quality as humans. And uh, it's really even just the tip of the iceberg in terms of um, what's then possible in the future. Like it feels like kind of in many ways, like the AI revolution is upon us, but I think we're even like in the next couple of years, uh, yeah, kind of just hitting the beginning. So yeah, what's coming in the future, certainly like lots and lots of uh, like high quality across all those, all the different like ways of generating that's art, that's text, everything you mentioned, um, where right now maybe it can kind of take some ideas you had and put it on paper. Uh, but we're getting to the point where uh, pretty soon uh, it might even be having some ideas of its own. Um, so it's a really exciting, really exciting time. Um, and I think the next like three, four, five years are going to have like an impact that's bigger than really even people in the AI industry, even bigger than kind of what we're all anticipating. Let's explore that a little bit because it's interesting. We keep talking about metaverse lately and there's a lot to build there, obviously. But I, I've seen AI just in the past couple of weeks that generates video, literally video. Show me video of a forest, you know, uh, of, uh, you know, we've seen uh, creative diffusion, other things like that. And you're making incredible art and images and stuff like that. But literally video, forest, river, mountain, city, that sort of thing. Uh, the the implications are, are really, really staggering. What does it what does it mean to have AI as a creator? I want to ask you, do you ever get kind of mystical about it? Think about the singularity when technological growth goes insanely exponential. Oh, definitely. I mean, just in terms of like what that can even do for society. Like if you imagine like, OK, well, right now AI is able to create this video. I think a lot to like what will happen when uh, AI is at the point where we can direct it towards like how do we cure cancer, for instance. And even like in realms like that, um, they're starting to be it turns out like a lot of the same um, AI that's being used to generate text, it turns out, yeah, it's great for generating images. It's great now for generating video. It's even great for coming up with like molecules uh, and drugs that can be used for uh, curing cancer. And then, yeah, the most exciting part of it all, what you mentioned is when maybe AI is also at the point where I can start writing the code that will make its own AI even better. And <laughs> there's been lots of research. It's at the early stages right now, but there's been lots of research in that. And that's like where the true singularity is, is when it can uh, kind of set itself to improve itself, when it can start to improve itself better than what a human can. Um, and the fact that we're already making great progress in that, it's impossible to speculate like what society could truly look like in such a situation. But I think in uh, most of our lifetimes, we're going to experience that. And um, for me personally, uh, I can't think of anything more exciting than that. It's definitely exciting. Um, but at that point, that AI may not decide that curing cancer is on its list of priorities <laughs> or that maintaining this race of, um, I don't know, bio humans <laughs> is really important. We'll see how that goes. Uh, there's some freaky things to think about there for sure. 
let's talk, talk about, about let's talk about your tech. Uh, you make tech that writes. Um, how good is it? Yeah, so I would say that right now it will get you maybe 90 to 95% of the way there. So a big uh, area that we focus on, because there's a lot of other kind of generative AI out there. You mentioned text and video, um, images. A lot of what we focus on is making the text that we're writing as factually accurate as possible. Um, that That's like actually, surprisingly, you would expect that AI text would be like, it kind of looks like a robot wrote it, but it's perfectly accurate. Like when people imagine like that super intelligent machine, I think that's like a, a lot of what's uh, conjured up. It's oftentimes actually the reverse where AI has done a really, really good job at figuring out how humans speak, um, how humans write, what persuasive text looks like, how to like kind of paint the picture of a story. And then often where it falls flat is knowing like what the actual correct fact is. Um, and that's where a lot of our work is centered around. And really our goal is to make it so that when you're writing text, um, especially like Article Forge, where you enter the keyword, get the article back, that you're able to rely on the accuracy and that like it isn't spreading like misinformation. It didn't get wrong, you know, like what your company does when your company was founded. So I would say still, there's a lot more progress to be made. At this point, it's generating text that you'd want a human proofreader to look over a little bit. You'd still want you know, like a little bit of fact checking to be done. But the fact that you can get it like 90% of the way there um, is still able to make like a really big impact. It's interesting because I've been able to get um, early access to the tool and test it and play with it a little bit. And I just literally 20 minutes ago asked to make an article about Apple's new iPhone 14 Pro. <laughs> so it, it generated about 500 words on that and tells me that the 14 Pro is splash water and dust resistance, a new phone, 6.7 inch ProMotion technologies, touchscreen, 48 megapixel true depth camera, photonic engine. So it's getting a lot of details there uh, that are fairly new, right? What is interesting and actually um, kind of corroborates what you're just talking about is it says Apple has released, and then a paragraph later says um, it, that the, the, it will probably increase in price. So it doesn't correlate those two things, right? That it actually has been yeah. released, and we know the price now, and it found material that said, hey, it's, it'll probably be more expensive. So that is quite interesting. One thing I do, because I've done a couple different tests with this, one thing I do kind of comfort myself with, because I write. <laughs> That's one of the things I do. I write, and I, am I gonna be replaced by a machine? I comfort myself with is it doesn't have what I would call personality. Um, I haven't mm -hmm. seen humor, for instance, or other things like that. I assume that's coming. Yeah, so I would say that um, a lot of ways, the direction in which um, writing and becoming a writer, I think is going to go is, as a lot of kind of the more mechanical aspects of writing text uh, is being replaced by machines, a lot of it will be the steps that come before and after. So um, the steps before would be like, for instance, on the research side, that could even be like the call that we're doing right now. That, you know, like there's a lot of work in figuring out like, what it actually even is that you want to write about. But then a lot of it too is on that, that uh, step at the end where maybe you have all the information like kind of on a, um, you've written it all down, you figured out the things you want to talk about, you have like decent prose around it, but then you really want to give it like your touch. And certainly that's something that, you know, like we want to do a better and better job of. Um, a feature that's coming out in just a couple months is where you can specify the style where you could say like, I want this to be written in like kind of witty or, um, you know, like, uh, kind of playful, um, positive, uh, dry, uh, whatever you want it to be. But still, the AI is not you, and you have something special that you want to be adding to a piece of content, um, a reason why your readers want to read what you're writing versus someone else. And a lot of that can come still at the very end, um, but still that's like an important part of a lot of text. So I think in many ways, um, tools like this can be empowering to writers where um, I think, I don't want to speak for all writers, but I know at least for me personally, I think that that research step and that step at the end where you're giving it your personality are where most of the fun is um, and the kind of parts in the middle where you're just trying to get all of your ideas then onto the paper itself. And that's something that then the machine can, in a similar way to, you know, like when Photoshop was first created, that didn't replace all artists. In many ways, it empowered them to focus on different things. It's interesting, as you're speaking there, I was remembering, I think it was about three, four years ago, and I think the Associated Press or Reuters were testing 
technology that was writing news articles. Now, very specific ones, and these were sports write-ups, especially for, yeah. I think, high school baseball teams and stuff like that, right? Where a machine could take the box score, take the, you know, the, the record of, of the game, what happened, and actually build um, a, a bit of a narrative around that. And that was doable in the time, and actually it, it kind of even really worked. I mean, you'd kind of buy that it was done. You wouldn't assume it was done by a machine because there's very defined rules and principles about how to report on a baseball game or, or different yeah. things like that. This is another order of difficulty right because what you're doing you're just saying give me a random keyword <laughs> you have no idea yeah. what the world is going to give you as a keyword and your ai has to basically say okay uh what do i know about this what can i learn about this what can i write about this that's quite an evolution just in in, in a few years definitely yeah and the long tail of that is really difficult where yeah users can enter and they do uh between all four thousand of our customers they enter the absolute darndest things across yeah like from you know like i like what you entered iphone to like why should i fly this airline to bali or like <laughs> what is the return policy for macy's um every single thing you could possibly think of then quite a few things you didn't realize anyone would ever even want to write about and so, yeah, like I think a really big way in which uh, AI has really evolved in the last year or two is um, these kind of like deep learning kind of machine learning algorithms and models that have come out in the last couple of years have done a really, really good job generalizing. Where when you were writing those uh, articles around like baseball, as you mentioned, it's like very formulaic rules. You knew like if a run was scored in the ninth inning um, and then the team went from uh, having less runs to more runs, that that was like the game winning run. You could code that in. You could say, like, that's what that's like. And there's these four ways of describing that. So when that happens, write one of these four sentences. But when you're writing about any topic in the world, you need to have something that's very, very generalizable where um, with a lot of the work we do to make things more factually accurate, we've kind of also built like this uh, almost like search engine for machines and kind of called like a knowledge search engine to give the AI we're writing like the right information as it's writing. But still that then requires this next step of given any information you could possibly imagine in the whole world, how do you turn that into a coherent uh, sentence, paragraph, article that's able to kind of cover that information and add value to the user? Right, right. And if you're watching the video of this, by the way, and you wonder why Alex brought up Bali, that's because he's there. And if you're wondering why it's shaky, that's because he's holding his laptop. <laughs> he doesn't have a proper office where he is. So thank you for that. We'll see if I can get some AI to stabilize that video. Uh, <laughs> What 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 gave me a little bit of um, I don't want to say hope. What what was interesting when you mentioned some of the queries or prompts that people are entering into your system? Many of those are things that no person would ever write about. And one of the reasons that Reuters or the AP was looking at for into this technology to do write ups about high school baseball games is that nobody was going to write about that. So that's interesting because if nobody was going to write about that anyways, somebody something writing about it adds something that some people will find useful and that's a good thing i guess the question will be at what level does it become hey we don't need a human to write you know give the ai a topic and boom there you go and it's amazing you write it in um i don't know uh, ernest hemingway style <laughs> write it in uh, you know write it uh, like a, an evening columnist uh, for the new york times whatever um when do you think we'll get there? I think we're getting there. Uh, I think uh, I'd say people continually underestimate how long it's going to take. I think that we're in the span of just a year or two. And I would agree with you. I think that um, really where AI can be empowering is in that long tail when you're competing, when there's like non-consumption with the alternative where you could not afford to create that content in the first place. And you can imagine that with like, yeah, like these very obscure topics. You could even imagine that for uh, news where like maybe there's something that happened on, in your local neighborhood where only 20 people want to read that article and then it doesn't make sense for a human to write it. You could also imagine it even almost as like uh, the, an extension of a search engine, for instance, where if you're, so I think uh, Google said that like 25% of uh, search queries that people enter are things that nobody has ever searched before. So um, you can imagine that um, in many ways, the next version of that could even be 
well, I want something written for me that's covering a topic that nobody else has ever written about. So um, yeah, technology is moving incredibly fast. I think that we're in the span of just a year or two from a lot of those being realized. That is fascinating. And what comes to mind is that we now have virtual celebrities. We have celebrities with millions of followers, essentially influencers, who are constructs of AI, constructs of code, who are not actual human beings. Uh, they are, um, in fact, people, of, uh, in some cases, you can buy a representation of that and people have married that. <laughs> I'm talking Japan here, okay? So it's a little <laughs> different, but um, we, we see that. That is really interesting because one could assume perhaps that not only are you developing the base level technology, but you could develop a personality around for your AI. You could develop or somebody could white label or say, I want to use this, but as a certain personality, train that personality, give it a certain backstory background and develop a writing style that is unique. And that could be somebody that people thought something that people follow and listen to and look for. Um, does that sound insane or does that sound very probable? Uh, actually, uh, well, Google just recently uh, released a research paper about this model Lambda, which um, had uh, showed really, really like groundbreaking results in terms of like a chat bot um, to the point where I think like one of their engineers uh, was convinced that it was uh, sentient and even I think got fired over it. And he got um, fired, and, exactly. Yeah, yeah, he got fired over it. And then actually I think uh, two of the researchers who were working on that then quit the company to create their own startup centered around um, creating uh, personas or at, or that you could chat with. So I think that that's coming right around the corner and you might even be in the span of like six, six to 12 months, you'll start seeing uh, prototypes surrounding that getting released. So um, now like the next step of like animating it, of, you know, like having it have like maybe unique uh, text to speech. A lot of it too is getting right now, it's like similar to article forge and text generation where you're getting it to like 90% of the way there. And then still you need to do a little bit more to get from like that 90 to 100. Um, but for both, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you can see it coming. This is an insane world we're building because we're generating uh, fake art, uh, not fake, it's real, uh, but it's generated. Um, we're, that, we're doing that with images. Uh, we're doing that increasingly with video. Uh, we're doing that with music. Um, and now we're creating text that is generative as well, AI generated. The nature of reality is one that is seemingly fast outracing our ability to understand it. <laughs> like, yeah, what is real? Our, our human evolution did not, uh, our biological brains uh, were not prepared for this. So it's going to be a brave new world for uh, how a society, re I mean, I would even argue that our brains are not well adapted even for the current society we're in right now with like social media and like uh, information bubbles and things like that. Uh, the, like a lot of things were kind of off script out of distribution for what the human brain was built for. And that's just going to keep, uh, keep on continuing. So I think that AI is going to provide a lot, a lot of good. And I'm like the ultimate like AI optimist. But it's also going to lead to some major, major societal changes um, in large part just because, yeah, our, our brains and our bodies were uh, in no point in our history were built to adapt for the future that's uh, coming for us right now. Well, I guess we have to upload ourselves then and uh, <laughs> <laughs> overclock our brains, <laughs> yeah. increase our storage capacity, <laughs> add a few CPUs, and uh, yeah. maybe possibly we can handle it. Well, this has been fascinating, Alex. Uh, thank you for taking some time. I know it's like 11.30 p.m. for you right now, so uh, you're pretty sharp for that late, but uh, thank you for the time. Yeah, I appreciate you having me, John. It was a pleasure talking with you.